Okay, so we just got the email from Tesla, and I think this is probably some of the best news for any current owner, especially those of you early adopters, that we've ever received. So basically we purchased our first AP2 Model S back in December of 2016. Yep. We were so excited about the possibility of autopilot and full self-driving that we purchased another one in March of 2017. That and was sold the, the original Autopilot 1 six months after owning it? Yeah. Just, Didn't own it long at all. Just so we could get the, the latest Autopilot hardware. Yep. Unfortunately, you know, when the software first came out, they didn't have much functionality, but as the years have gone by, it's gotten a lot better. So in March of 2017, we took delivery of our S100D, which also this had car. Autopilot 2. And we were, you know, happy to get Autopilot 2, waiting for that yep. new functionality. But then we noticed a few months later in August of 2017, they were already releasing Autopilot 2.5 cars, and we still hadn't even had you know full self-driving in our Autopilot 2 cars. Which, full self-driving was purchased with this car from day, day one. Day it was one, ordered yeah. on it. And so anyways, with Autopilot 2.5, it had a, an enhanced radar, newer radar, mm -hmm. had different cameras and, and a slightly different computer, and uh, we were wondering, you know, what, what that was going to mean. Yeah, what did that mean for us? Because technically... Do we need that for full self-driving? And Elon, you know, people mentioned it, and Elon said, well, it's more like Autopilot 2.1. Very small difference between Autopilot 2 and Autopilot 2.5. Yeah. yeah. And we waited, and then 2018 came along, and there was a new MCU that came out around March of 2018. Yeah. And it was much snappier, very similar in performance. We actually had a video on that. Yeah. Link it up in the iCard. It was very similar in performance to yeah. what is offered in the Model 3. Especially the web browser. Yeah. Huge differences on that and actually made it usable. Because we noticed originally the web browser takes a long time. It's just easier to use your smartphone. So we did various tests back yeah. when that upgrade came out. And Elon tweeted that they were going to do some software optimizations to make it faster. Yeah. And they did come out with some software. Yes. Which definitely made the browser faster. And it worked for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we did some tests to compare capabilities. But the MCU 1 browser still didn't have nearly the functionality yeah. as the MCU 2 browser. And so we've been waiting for, you know, almost two years. And of many of updates that have brought a lot of things lot that of this car unfortunately didn't get. Some games. And also, we didn't get sentry mode on here or the dash cam feature. However, 2.5 cars did end up getting that. The Autopilot 2 cars... We never got that. Yeah, we did have a very limited form of sentry mode, which basically made it look yeah. like sentry mode was it there. It would pop it up on the screen, it but it never, didn't do anything. never actually recorded anything, or if it did, there's no way for you to actually access any video. Also, more recently, in December of 2019, Tesla released the, the full self-driving visualizations, yeah. uh, which really added a lot of cool new things to the display on the Model 3 and the Raven, you know, newer uh, Raven S and X, which shows, you know, traffic cones, tra uh, trash cans. You don't see trash cans in here. I don't see How, I see how cars. are you supposed to know what's there? Yeah, it's a, I see cars, <laughs> bikes, motorcycles, but so much more has been added. Traffic yeah. lights, the most important thing, exactly. traffic lights, yeah. stop, stop signs. signs. And so we don't have any of that. Yeah. And we've been waiting, you know, and people have tweeted Elon over the years, and Elon said that, you know, it's coming. They were working on it. Yep. And more recently, Eric tweeted Elon a few months back and, and asked about uh, the upgrade to yeah. MCU2. And Elon said it was possible, but it wasn't really worth it. Yeah. But as someone who has driven both a car with the new one and with this one, my eyes, it's worth it. Yeah. If it's 1500 2500 maybe even upwards of a couple thousand, I still think it's worth it because rather than buy a brand new car, you can just pay that. Yeah, it's kind of like upgrading your PC at home or your, yeah. or your Mac, whatever. You know, you typically exactly. upgrade your computer every few years. And, and with Tesla trying to have sustainable transportation, it only makes sense that they have hardware yeah. that is upgradable and maintainable for years Definitely. Because the battery on here is great. How much degradation we do have we have on this? very little degradation. I think Maybe I, a handful of miles? Three? Uh, three to five. Yeah, it's, three to five. It's almost... And almost 40,000 miles. Yeah, 42,000 42,000, 42, I stand corrected. Just the center screen, we would like it to be snappier. And we'd also like that full self-driving chip that we still hadn't got. Exactly. It's been three years this month we've been waiting. Yeah. Uh, again, we didn't know that there was going to be a hardware upgrade required for a full self-driving computer yep. when we first purchased it in 2017, but by 2018, the, the word was... Kind of became clear. It was going to be required before full self-driving would be capable on this vehicle. So all that said, it is now official. The FSD computer 
will be able to be installed in this car as well as the 2.5 cars and more importantly well i don't know depends on your outlook and what is important to you a new mcu to bring us up to the current revision and basically that upgrade those two upgrades are going to yeah. make this car almost as good as a new raven pretty much yeah 2020 or 2019 Raven S and X. There's still, some trade-offs. Still a few differences. I mean, the Raven has a suspension, but we have the sunroof. Yeah. Which yeah. you can't get anymore. Um, I'm sure you could probably do some kind of different suspension if you really wanted to, but a sunroof, you really can't add that. <laughs> the Raven still does have a, a better range, too. A little bit know, better range, Closing yep. in on 400 miles on the S yep. and over 350 miles with the X. But, you know, but this is still 330 miles. Almost 330 miles on a full charge on the on my S. And, yeah, I, that's pretty good range. Oh, that's amazing. And, and also, if I were to upgrade to a new car now, it would probably cost me upwards of $40,000. Trading this one in, Completely. buying a new one, maybe not forty, but at least $30,000 to it upgrade. It would cost a big chunk. Whereas for $2,500... We can get the MCU and already prepaid for the full self-driving. Yeah. Almost had the same experience. So while we've already purchased the full self-driving upgrade and we're planning on getting the MCU infotainment upgrade, yep. that's actually... Tesla is saying that that's not actually required to get full self-driving. Right. You should be able to still just get full self-driving. You just won't get the visualizations. I don't really know how that will work because it sh yeah. currently shows the stoplights unless they go something really basic and they just flash up some non-3D you know, uh, traffic lights or stop signs and get rid of the cool uh, graphics and just put something really simple. But everything else it adds, definitely if you, my attitude is if we're getting the FSD chip, we might as well splurge a little bit, pay 2500 and update the MCU. And that will just extend the life of this car that exactly. much longer. So that is actually what we're going to do uh, as soon as possible on this one. Now the 2.5 car, red one, uh, that one actually is able to go now. And the 2.0 car should start hopefully in late March. They're going to be emailing you availability. So don't go schedule it in the app like we tried doing. Yeah, it, it, um, it actually says on Tesla's website, yeah. if you go to tesla.com slash support slash infotainment, it says you cannot purchase the upgrade until you've received the email. So yeah. don't... We, we got a little trigger happy and just scheduled it without reading that first and uh, got a very polite response from Tesla service, but basically saying, unfortunately, they can't do anything until this car comes up. But it's just a few weeks. It sounds exactly. like, as Eric said, 2.5 is scheduling now. Yep. Later March, they'll be scheduling Autopilot 2 cars. And afterwards, in April, they're actually going to allow Autopilot 1, and even, it sounds like, pre-Autopilot pre cars get this MCU yeah. upgrade. And that's a great deal because a, a lot of people have had their Teslas since like 2012, 2013. And they absolutely love it because they work great still. And they're still great. Except it's just a little outdated MCU. Yeah, and with the, with the upgraded software the firmware keeps getting up you know yep. we're on version 10 now yeah it's, you know it's not as capable of running the uh, software as it was back in 2012 totally because they keep adding new features new games all kinds of things and so it's amazing that tesla is allowing those older cars you know eight years old to upgrade yep. the computer i don't know of any other auto manufacturer that has ever allowed their main you know infotainment center to be upgraded to a, no. a newer version so all this is awesome to hear but there is one drawback that might be kind of major for some for us it's really not a big deal and we actually are going to try some things to maybe get around it but upgrading the mcu you will lose am fm and the xm radio if you yeah if your car is so equipped and it might be something where we could potentially buy that receiver and maybe change it out ourselves but it does sound like it's quite a job to do yeah that's why we think they're not including radio any longer is yeah. that they're trying to get this update out there for the least cost possible and also be able to do it as quickly as possible. Yeah. And it sounds like the tuner for the radio is located in a really hard to get spot, which yeah. would add hours worth of time in the service center. And if you multiply that out by however many tens of thousands of cars, adds up quick. it's going to add up quickly. But we're hoping, you know, we're going to ask about that too and see if that's something that could be added yeah. uh, for an extra charge. Or upgrading. we can even buy the part and try it ourselves. Yeah, because from what we hear, the, the, the digital radio tuner is just connecting some power wires mm -hmm. and an ethernet cable to the MCU too. So it doesn't sound that difficult. It's just a time-consuming job because yeah. of the access yeah so we might even try that out 
might be a future video. So yeah, we never know. One other, you know, potential negative, which we're positive, whatever. It's twenty five hundred dollars, and yeah. and we were assuming when we paid for full self driving in you know three years ago that that would allow us to do full self driving. Mm -hmm. Now Tesla is coming out saying you can still do full self driving. It just won't have all the visualizations if you don't upgrade your MCU. Paying twenty five hundred dollars to bring the car up to parity with the new ones, basically is a steal. Yeah. Maybe I view it differently, but it's much cheaper than buying a whole new car. Exactly. Because everything else works beautifully on here. Yep, no problems. And another cool thing is we are locked in with the grandfathered uh, premium connectivity. That's true, yeah. So, you know, now we'll be able to do Netflix, Hulu, all that stuff. Netflix and chill. And there was actually a really cool track mode update. We'll have a different video on that, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't, because that should be a pretty fun one when we can play around with that. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to share this with you because I think this is probably one of the coolest things that Tesla has released in a long time, just to make sure that previous owners can upgrade their car without upgrading the entire car. Yeah. It's been, you know, the last few updates have been kind of a letdown for some of those older MCU1 cars. Exactly. Just because the updates took a while to come, and when they came, it was missing a lot of the bells and whistles yeah. that the MCU2 cars were getting. Yeah, so I definitely think this is a pro. Comment down below, is $2,500 something that you would be willing to spend to update your MCU and get all the games... Uh, the internet browser, the, just the faster MCU, the visualizations, for the visualizations all that. Is that something that you would consider? Or would you not because of the loss of AM, FM, and XM radio? Now for me, I just use Spotify or stream from my phone, so it's not a big deal. But I know some people, it might be a deal breaker. So yeah, huge thanks to our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean. If you guys are looking to accessorize your Model S, much like this one, X or Model 3, definitely check them out. All linked down below. And using code Tesla Inventory will get you 15% off your first purchase. My two must-have accessories for Model 3 are definitely going to be a center console wrap just to help protect that gloss black fingerprint magnet material that Tesla has used, as well as a matte screen protector. Really helps cut down any glare from the sun, as well as any oil from your fingerprints. And they do make those screen protectors for S and X as well. Uh, a lot of other cool accessories for S and X. So definitely go ahead and check them out. I'll link down below. As always though, thumbs up if you enjoyed that video. We give it two thumbs up for the news because we are super excited. And go ahead and click here to subscribe. Here for some other ones. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Looks like Jim Carrey and like Ace Ventura going on here. Mm -hmm.